Let's have a look at an exam question. The functions of f of x and g of x are given by the following. f of x equals 7 minus 3x and g of x equals 2x. And then we have to calculate the value of f of g of 3. And then secondly, we need to solve the equation g of f of x when that equals to 62. Let's start by solving g of f of 3. In order to solve composite functions, we'll always start from the right and move towards the left. So we're going to start by looking at the g of 3. When doing this, it's exactly the same as substitution. So all you need to now do is wherever you see an x, replace that with a 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. Now that we have g of 3, we move into the next section, which is then f of g of 3. So now we're going to take the result of g of 3, which was 6, and plug that into our formula. So now wherever we see that x, we're going to replace it with a 6. Performing the rest of the calculations, we get 11. Now the second part of the question. g of f of x equals to 62. Here we're going to once again move from right to left. Now because there is no value for f of x, it's just f of x, we're going to take the whole function f of x and plug that into g of x. So wherever we see an x in the g of x formula, we're going to replace that with 7 minus 3x. So the formula looks like this. Expanding my brackets, we say 2 times 7, which is 14, and 2 times negative 3x becomes negative 6x. Now that we have that section, we can now place 14 minus 6x equal to 62. It's now just a linear equation, and we need to find the value of x. So we're taking the 14 to the other side, and now we need to get rid of that negative 6. So we divide both sides by 6. So we divide 48 also by 6. So we get x is equal to negative 8. Here's the next one. It's a tricky one, but uses very similar concepts. So if you want to give it a try, pause the video now. To start with, we've been given these two equations and how they want us to interact with them. So they are saying that we need to put f of g of x equal to g of f of x and then solve for x. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with the left first. Once again, we always work from the right to the left as we did before. So we're going to take the g of x equation and plug it in to the f of x. So wherever we see an x in the f of x's equation, we're going to replace that with x squared plus 2. Then expanding my brackets, I get this. And simplifying and performing all my calculations, my final answer is 2x squared plus 1. Now that I've got the left hand side, I'm going to do exactly the same on the right, except now we're going to work with f of x and plug that into my equation for g of x. So wherever I see an x in my g of x equation, I replace it with 2x minus 3. So that then just becomes squared plus 2. Now I need to expand that double bracket. So I get 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 plus 2. And then I can bring those, the 9 and 2 together. And I have a binomial. Now that I have my two equations, I can follow my next square, which says I need to put them equal to each other. After this, I'm going to rearrange my formula to make it equal to zero. So I'm going to bring all my terms on the left hand side to the right and collect them. And now I can see that there's a common factor of two. So I'm going to divide all my terms by two because dividing the left hand side by two also results in a zero. So that just cancels out. So I'm left with x squared minus 6x plus 5. Factorizing the equation, we can see that we have x minus 1 and x minus 5. Therefore, x equals 1 or x equals 5. 
I hope it helped. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.